listening to one podcast that supports equality by offending everyone equally. Oh, man. I will never forgive your ass for this shit. This is some fucked up and fucked up shit. This is the Toe on the Trigger podcast. With your host, Daniel Ripples. Treat objects like women, man. And Mike Morano. <laughs> so sit back, relax, and prepare to be desensitized. We're on a mission from God. Your toes on the trigger. And they're here to help you keep from pulling in. That is correct. This is episode 029. I wrote it down. See that? <laughs> yeah. Of the Toe on the Trigger podcast. I'm Daniel Repples, and with me, as always, the man, the myth, the legend, Mike Murado. How you doing today, Mike? I'm doing all right, man. Fantastic. <laughs> a little nervous. <laughs> a little nervous. And uh, we're in a new location today. Yeah. I call this our secret ISIS base. <laughs> That's what I call it. Dude, that's what I called it online. You just want to piss the world off, don't you? Dude, that's what I want to do. I think it's a good thing. Some men, Master Bruce, just want to watch the world burn. <laughs> we don't have that sound clip, unfortunately. Uh, that's why we have me. <laughs> Cheers to that. Uh, I must admit, um, I did have a drink before we showed up. I smelled it, dude. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Are uh, you, is, is, was this getting on your nerves? Were you nervous? I was really nervous, man. I still kind of am. Why? Just because we're live? We've done it live well, before. That, that's part of it. It's um. So we're, technically, we're live to tape, right? So like, well, we, we are live, live. Well, no, no. I mean, usually when we do the show, like, yes. there's no editing, so like, it's not like we go back and like correct anything. But it's the feeling of like knowing that like somebody's like lurking over me. It just makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we have a technical director and everything. We yeah. even have people switching and all kinds of stuff, man. So, um, and then there's that story that I'm going to tell tonight. Um, yes, <laughs> yes, the, that's got me pretty nervous. The much needed, uh, the much needed to be told story of of Mike and his shenanigans. Yeah, sleeping uh, with a married woman. Oh, before we go into that, I yeah, okay. So, I'm going to find out if I'm in the wrong on this. Okay, I uh, you are. <laughs> I probably am. Okay, so, you know, I, I, I've loaned you money before, right? And, uh, and you've probably, loaned, yeah. yeah, and you've loaned me money, and yeah. we just loan friends money. Now, when you loan someone money, do you expect to, like, to get it back? I think we've had this discussion before. Yeah, I, I did up until, like, a year and a half ago. Yeah. When I talked to one of our mutual friends from, uh, you know, one of our mutual friends, and they said... um they put the idea in my head, like, don't loan money out that you're not willing to, like, never get back, basically. Yeah. And since then, I've kind of, like, stopped loaning people money. Yeah. Unless, like, I know them well enough to know for a fact that they're going to pay me back. Yeah. Not for a fact, but, you know, like, have a general idea. Or at least pay you back with something. And he, like, if you need help yeah. moving or something, they'll yeah. help you with it in some way. But, yeah. Beach, whatever. A BJ, yeah. <laughs> Blow job. <laughs> rim job, whatever. Yeah. So... And I, I have the same mindset. Like, if once I loan someone money, like, in my mind, that money's gone. Yeah. And I may or may not get it back. If I get it back, fantastic. But if not, it's not the end of the world. So if if I loaned you money and it's been two years and I come back to you and say, hey, do you happen to have, like, that money that I owe you? Yeah. Like, that doesn't make me a douche knob, right? No, not at all. Okay, because I uh, I had this the situation where uh, somebody I loaned someone money about two years ago. I loaned them two hundred dollars, and it was from <laughs> I know a, exactly what you're talking about. Yes, <laughs> and it was it was from a savings account that uh, was actually accruing interest for yeah. a while. And uh, so I finally the other day I did not want to approach this person about it because I just I just didn't want them to think that I was like it was for like rent or something like that, right? Uh, it was what they needed it for. Yeah. yeah, they needed it to put like a down payment on an apartment or something like that. Yeah. So I was helping them out, and it was no big deal at the time, and it wasn't a big deal up until like a week ago when I started getting all these. I was just I'm like I need to start paying shit off because this is ridiculous, you know. Yeah. So I finally like I I bid the bullets. Okay, I'm gonna ask this person. Right. So I said, Hey, I need to ask you a question, and I hadn't talked to them for a long time. Yeah. And so they said, Okay, what's your question? I said, Well, first of all. 
how are you? <laughs> and they said, I'm good. How are you? Oh, you know, great, blah, 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 bullshit. Then they said, okay, what's your other question? I said, I just want to know if you're, if you're in a position to pay back that, uh, that money by any chance. Like if that's, and they said, yeah, I am. Which is why, like, I've been asking you if you wanted to go to coffee lately because I wanted to pay you back. I just didn't want money to be the reason. And they got kind of snarky about it. Yeah. And I was like, no, like, I'm not avoiding you. It's just that I've just been really busy. And they're like, well, I can mail it to you. I was like, well, I mean, we can still, like, have coffee or dinner or whatever, like, one of these days. And, and that's cool. And they're like, no, it'd be easier if I sent it to you. And I said, well, you know, I would like to catch up. Nothing. Completely ignored me on Facebook, right? <laughs> so you can see if they saw it or not. <laughs> yeah. Oop, little bubble moved down. <laughs> yeah. And I was all, son of a bitch. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so I see, yeah, right? Which is why I, I'm at the point, I don't even want to text people anymore. Yeah, I, yeah. Just, I just, I just, I just totally. It was weird like a year ago when that's all I was doing. Was, yeah, I did. I only wanted to use Messenger. <laughs> and now that's all I want to use when I talk to people is I just want to use Messenger. Yeah. And uh, so anyways, so. She saw the message and I said, okay. So I just sent her my address. She said, okay, have a good day. <laughs> that was it. Right? Yeah. So I was like, you're irritated. Like I just said it as a statement. I said, you're irritated. They didn't say anything. And then the next day I said, hey, like, did I offend you? Again, saw the message, didn't respond. So I don't know. I, did I, was I an asshole for just not talking to this person for so long and then out of nowhere, like asking him for money? That they owed me no, two years ago? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, so when the money was loaned, was there any kind of, like, were you just like, yeah, just pay me back whenever kind mm -hmm. of thing? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I try not to ask people for money, like loan money. Yeah. But when I, when I do or I do something along those lines, I try to let people know, listen, I'm a forgetful son of a bitch. Like, yeah. please don't feel bad to, like, remind me. Yeah. Um. The only other example that I can think of is, like, uh, my ex-mother-in-law, she's a dance teacher, and she's constantly asking me to, like, get music for her and, like, burn her CDs. Mm -hmm. So I have to constantly tell her, like, dude, like, don't be afraid to, like, remind me of shit because I'm so forgetful that, like, when situations like that arise, I tell people, like, please remind me. Like, it's not a dick move. Like, please do so because I just forget. Yeah. So, like, for me, like, if I asked you for money, like, hey, can I borrow some money? I would probably let you know, like, in that moment, like, hey, don't be afraid to, like, remind me about this. Yeah. Because I, I will forget. But even then, like, if I didn't do that and somebody called me and was like, hey, like, you know, about that, like, $1,000 I loaned you, like, <laughs> five years ago. Can I get that back? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I don't think that's a dick move at all. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think so nice either. nice enough to, like, lend you money, like, you and, know. And then they finally want it back after how <laughs> yeah. long? Like, after, it's been about two years, I'd say. Yeah. Has it been that long already? About, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Fuck. Yeah. And, um, I mean, dude, we earn money with hours of our lives. Like, yeah, and, <laughs> well, and this wasn't even just, like, money from my checking account. Like, this this money was literally being saved, like, $25 or something at a time because of my, my budget at the time. And the account had just matured, like, the day before I loaned it to her. It oh, literally really? just had transferred into my checking account. I was like, fuck yeah, I have like 200 and something. Like, I think it was like 300 bucks. And then she asked me, and I was like, you know, well, yeah. You yeah. know, because I, I kind of had, you know, some feelings going on <coughs> and whatnot. And uh, it's okay, I brushed that shit off. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, too, a little bit too late, though, I think I brushed it off. So, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I don't. I don't think that makes me an asshole at all. I felt like a dick. I would have gone moment. about it differently, though. I would have been like, hey, like, you think I could borrow, like, exactly $200? <laughs> well, that's the thing, because she, she had mentioned it to me, and, I, and I've done the same thing where I borrowed money, and it's been some time. Yeah. And I'm just like, and I'm like, hey, like, I haven't forgotten. Like, I owe you money. Like, I haven't forgotten. I'm just, I'm working on it. So and, you uh, go the extra step, and you let people know, like. That well, I remembered, and then I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you're not going to pay them when you were. Send them the reminder. Yeah. You just let them know that. I you just let them know that I remember. Like one guy, I owe him like a hundred bucks and like I saw him like a year ago or something like that. I was like, hey, I didn't forget. Like I owe you. Nah, that's noble as fuck, dude. I owe you a hundred bucks. He's like, that oh. Gets, that gets me hard a little bit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> He's like, oh, I I forgot. <laughs> he, he had forgotten I owed him money, you know, but, but I still remember and it's always there. Like it's still on my like sheet of people I owe money to. Yeah. You know, so. I'm trying to pay off the zero interest stuff last. So those people are like <laughs> way on the back burner. Yeah. So well, I mean it's the the human human 
the you human would, the human thing to do. I mean, I yeah. don't know. I mean, I just had to borrow money. <laughs> well, and you know, I it it's gotten me kind of far because there's this one person that when I'm in a bind, I borrow money from. Yeah, and I always like I tell them exactly how much I'm going to pay them, when I'm going to pay them, and how long it's going to take. And I've always done it. So I had this one bill that had a ridiculous interest on it. And so I was like, hey, like the payoff amount is less than the balance and it's due on like in a week and I don't have it. Like, can I borrow that? Yeah. And then I'll pay you off. I'll pay you back like 50 bucks every two weeks for the next like few weeks. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. Like, I know you're good for it. I was like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Man, I wish somebody would like at some point walk up to me and be like, Hey man, like I still remember I would, that would be like that would get me so hard. Like, oh, you owe me money? Like I forgot. Yeah, right. I don't <laughs> I want have it. Tell me. Yeah. I don't fucking even, have yeah, it. Even if they didn't have it, if they were like, even if they were like two years out from having it, just somebody walking up to me and be like, hey, dude, like I haven't forgotten I owe you money. I'd be like, oh god, <laughs> hold on while I jerk off real quick. <laughs> That's fucking. You know, awesome. I wouldn't get it on them. I would just do it there. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so that's uh, that was my struggle the last few days. That's it. Like these are my problems, you know, which I guess aren't that bad. No, you know, I mean, uh. well, there are other ones. I uh, oh, okay. So Eric was gonna buy my car, my little white one. Yeah, and uh, I he came over to look at it, and he's like, and he was almost gonna buy it. And I was like, dude, honestly, like this car is like a piece of shit, and if you don't want it, like I totally get it. Yeah, and he's like, no, like I, I do. It's fine. And I was like. He he almost stuff felt like because he like he want, didn't want to waste my time. I think is what he was doing. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, dude, like, or honestly. because he showed interest, and I felt like he had to like follow through with it. Yeah, and he didn't. So I was just like, you know, I said, if you don't want, it, he's like, yeah, honestly, like I don't want to do it. It's fine. I was like, okay. So I found one of those like cars for cash places that would buy it from me. Yeah, and uh, they gave me like a hundred bucks for it or something. Does it run? Yeah, dude, at college will give you like three hundred. No, they them. they only they only offered me uh. 135 if I brought it to them. Hey, you got to talk them up, though, man. How do you Those talk about people are negotiable. I don't know. They seem they seem pretty uh, dead on. No, nah, man. Ne- <laughs> you got to break them down, man. It's I like guess. that chick that you, like, you know is vulnerable and you want to have sex with, <laughs> but she says no, like, there's a breaking point eventually. Well, that's when you start playing on their insecurities. It's all about the insecurities. Yeah, ecology has insecurities. <laughs> <laughs> what are they, though? I mean, because this car is nothing special. Like, what no, but it runs. Yeah, I guess. You know what I mean? For them, it's all about parts. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you got all these working parts, like, they'll, you know, they'll, yeah. they'll budge eventually. Yeah, good point, good point. Yeah. So, um, what would you consider yourself, like, as far as, like, growing up, um, like, for me, so I was, I grew up, like, it was super ghetto growing up for me, right? Like, I grew up in a predominantly Mexican neighborhood. You know what I mean? There's a few white people around, but they were pretty ghetto, too. Like, what would you... I don't even know how to word that. Like, would you consider yourself growing up, like... I was in, a like, a middle-class, like, just the typical, like, white middle-class family. I wouldn't say white-collar, but, like, a white-collar is kind of... Air- no, not even that, because a lot of people... I grew up, you know, in the middle of Santee, right, right there, in, like, a suburby kind of area. All right. So I'm, like, a suburban kid, yeah. I guess. Yeah, you could say. But, um, like, you weren't one of those kids that would, like, spray paint on your walls or anything like that? Uh, I would if I would could have gotten away with it. <laughs> so I grew up, I considered myself, like, so culturally very Mexican, right? Grew up yeah. very, in a very Mexican neighborhood. And, um, but to the outside world, very ghetto at the same time, right? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I got into this cultural debate with my neighbors a couple weeks ago, I think. And, um... When you, <laughs> oh man, are you talking about what you think you're gonna talk about? <laughs> yes, oh, yes. Okay, let's do well, this. When you go down, when you go and you buy hot dog franks, <laughs> <laughs> yes, hot dogs, and you bring them home, you call them hot dogs. I call them hot dogs. That's it. There's no question about it. You there's call them no, hot dogs. They're hot dogs. And that's a white people thing to you. That's a fucking. That's a universal thing to me, man. <laughs> I'm like, right. I thought so too. <laughs> I thought that. Well, I didn't think it was universal. I thought it was a white people thing. Okay. Growing up, right. My mom would ask me, like, do you want some weenies? Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, uh, and we got into this huge cultural debate with one of my neighbors. So um, my next door neighbor, they're Mexican, but they're what we consider pocho, which is like you're Mexican and you live culturally, you live like a Mexican family, but you don't speak a whole lot of English. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean a whole lot of Spanish. Okay. It's like you speak mostly English and when you speak Spanish, it's only because you really have to. And it's like burrito. 
right? Yeah, stuff like that, you know? <laughs> and then the their neighbor is like this white couple who's more Mexican than I am. So yeah. the, the chick is white, but she speaks Spanish. The dude's a really light-skinned Mexican, but they live... I mean, they, they beat their kids like <laughs> my mom used to beat me, you know what yeah. I mean? They keep the culture like just in check. <laughs> Didn't your mom throw like a can of soup at your head? <laughs> a can of tomato soup. It was off-brand uh, tomatoes. Not even Campbell's. Dude. It said tomato soup <laughs> around the side of it. It said tomate. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's how they, they live, you know what I mean? Like uh, culturally, they live like like Mexicans, like I was raised. And then we have the Pocho family, and then they ha- we have me. The which, Pocho family. That's funny. Yeah, which is me, and I'm like, uh, I guess I could kind of consider myself like whitewashed slash Pocho slash, I don't even know what. I don't know. You, you Spanish really well. <laughs> I, I speak the language really well, but I don't live. The culture. Like, culturally, yeah. I don't live like a Mexican. Yeah, so, that's true. Um, what were, they were like talking about, like, I think the guy was hungry, and he told his, his girlfriend to make him some weenies. <laughs> And it started this Fuck, fucking just so this weird. debate, dude, that just went like people were getting angry, right? And, Seriously? Uh, yeah, because like, uh, so we have like the elementary school, which is like a few blocks from my house. And me and the Bocho lady send their kids across town to the other elementary school, the newer. To the white kid elementary the, school? Basically, <laughs> yeah, without saying it that way. Yeah, and um, the Mexican, the, the other couple there send their kids to the elementary school that's in our neighborhood. And she was talking about how on the menu, like they actually write weenies like on the, on the school menu. And, um, you know, the poacher, she's like, my daughter doesn't eat weenies. Like she doesn't put weenies in her mouth. Like <laughs> oh, she, God. she eats hot dogs. Like it was this huge deal. Oh, right? Jeez. And, uh, I realized that like, it's, that's like a cultural word. Like it's weird for other people to hear that word weenies. Yeah, because I think of a, I think of like a, like an eight year old's penis. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess I don't know. I, I don't even think of like a grown man's penis. It's a, like an, a, the penis of an eight year old. <laughs> that's a weenie. <laughs> yeah, that's a weenie to me. See, for us growing up, like weenies was like a regular thing. And then today, my boss, you know, they're white. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're very white, and uh, they're from Texas and stuff. And um, uh, yeah, that's about as white as you can get. Our dog died, so we there's these like neighborhood cats. And like the boss, the lady was like, "Hey, why don't you put some weenies out for the cats?" And I was like, "Yes, dude!" I got so fucking hard, dude. Like, they're weenies, right? Like, and she just didn't understand, like, <laughs> why you were why so... I was so excited about weenies. And she's like, "She's like, yeah, they're weenies." Like, I don't know what y'all want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's so weird. So there's the uh, there's me, the ambiguous Mexican, right? <laughs> yeah. There's like the super Mexican, like culturally Mexican couple. There's the pocho. Uh, lady, right? Yeah. And they were talking about how they prepare their hot dogs. Now, when you prepare a hot dog, like at home, how, what do you do? Uh, like depends. boil it or? Uh, yeah, usually I, you know, I actually like to fry it up a little bit. You get fry it, it? Yeah, I like fry it because I like to get it in the, oh, I like to brown it. Dude. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, see? That's wow, nice. we just had a moment. Oh, dude. You just yeah. growled at me and everything. <laughs> Holy shit. So the, the super Mexican lady, right? She said she slices it on four sides. Right? Yeah. Two, two on each side. Like and shallow she, cuts? Huh? Like shallow cuts? Yeah. Okay, that makes and then, sense. And I thought then, she like uh, fucking gouged it. <laughs> no, no, shallow cuts. And then she boils them. Uh-huh. Right? And that's what she makes her hot dogs. Yeah, I've heard of that. And like, so they're talking about like culturally the different ways like people make Mexican, like hot dogs, right? Yeah. And if you walk into any Mexican household, like culturally Mexican, you're going to find a stockpile of hot dogs, of weenies, mm-hmm. in their freezer. Really? Like, you will find 10 to 20 packages of weenies in the freezer. Yeah, I think I might have been raised Mexican then, because my mom loved, my dad loves weenies. <laughs> <laughs> my dad loves, it it's weird, weird. it's so weird. He <laughs> fucking loves hot dogs, and uh, and uh, he always microwaves them so they, like, explode, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, they look like a brain. <laughs> That's pretty good. And then, he put, and then he puts it on bread, <laughs> regular bread, we never had buns, bread with mayo on it. <laughs> So, yeah. so I, I guess I was kind of raised, but we never called them weenies, but we had a stockpile. We had just, yeah. Cause when shit more. hits the fan, <laughs> weenies will keep you alive. Yeah. Right? When you've run out of money and you can no longer afford like the stovers. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to survive on weenies. So we're talking ah, about the different ways, dogs. <laughs> ways that we, we cook these things up. Right. And like, they're talking about how ghetto, like almost proud of how ghetto they are. Right. And I'm like trying to fit in. Right. I'm like, Oh yeah. Did you ever ghetto grill? And they're like, what's that? 
I'm like, dude, that's when you just turn on the coils and you roll your hot dog across like the coils. No way. <laughs> and the one girl's like, sweetie, you're ghetto. <laughs> that, that's like, really ghetto. <laughs> Is it though? <laughs> yeah, that's so ghetto. It's ghetto that's, grilling. That's dude. awesome though. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Apparently, the, so there was just this, within like 20 feet of all three of us neighbors, this huge cultural divide. And it really like, it was getting heated out there. Yeah. Like about how like her daughter will not eat weenies. She eats hot dogs. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I busted the word Frank out and everybody just gasps. <laughs> Fra- yeah. Frank's is like, I don't know. For me, I think that's more of a, like, I think it's like a, like ballpark Frank's. It's like a, a brand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of those things like, uh, oh, fuck. What's, uh, now I'm like at a lot. Oh, like Kleenex. People say, hand me a Kleenex. Yeah. But Kleenex is a brand. It's tissue. So it's like Frank's is like a brand that just hasn't made its way to like notoriety enough yeah. to, to be able to just encompass all hot dogs. So it's tissue, not to be confused with gift, gift packing tissue. Gift packing <laughs> tissue. <laughs> Which is bullshit. Yes. Did you see the video I tagged you in today? <laughs> yeah. With the with the the pocket, the dude. Pocket. It's a pocket watch pocket, and that makes more sense. Did, Did you actually have, watch the video? I thought it was like thirty three seconds long. All I saw was like chain, somebody stuffing change in their Kleenex, like yeah. tissues. Well, at the end, it tells you like it was made for pocket watches. Oh, really? That was like the whole the whole point. It kept of it. cutting off with the tampon. <laughs> <laughs> which is absurd which, because which is I mean, what women do denims for men <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck. men men can use tampons for certain things <laughs> for like booze yeah you know, like put up their nose if they want to oh. they yeah, what I was, it was like sticking it like jack daniels and shoving it up your ass <laughs> uh, oh man so i guess culturally i'm pretty ambiguous yeah i'm like i lie nowhere well, I, I'm like as I always, low as ghetto grilling a hot dog, which even like regular Mexicans, like culturally Mexicans won't do. They're like, oh, no. But like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I buy good toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> but I buy good toilet Well, that's a good sign. I buy, yeah. So I'm like all over the place. Well, I, when when I talk about you to like friends, I just tell them like, yeah, he's, he's my Taco Bell Mexican. Like, <laughs> it's just because like, you're not, you wouldn't, like you're brown, but that could mean anything. But then when your dad calls you on the phone, like you'll be in the middle of talking to me, you'll be like, "Yeah, man, like we'll do the podcast whenever." And then your phone rings, you're all bueno, <laughs> and you're just I'm like, like arriba, arriba. "Yeah, Daniel, yeah, arriba, arriba. <laughs> McDonald's." <laughs> like yeah. just weird English words have no accent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm so. unique. I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess there's a lot of you. And I, you had told me the reason that you don't have like an accent and stuff is because your mom refused to put you. In English is second language classes, right? Yeah, yeah, because English is my second language. I was yeah. raised uh, speaking Spanish. My mom actually didn't even know I spoke English until I was in the first grade. Really? Yeah. Wow. And she went to like that back to school night or whatever, and mm. like I was talking to my friends, and she's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of funny because the ink because most of the kids that go to school and have the the ESL classes like they all have accents. Yeah. And then. So I guess that's the secret. Just say, fuck you, kid. Like, you're going to go learn this shit on your own. Yeah. And then you just throw, like, throw them into the real world, man, and uh, learn English by default. You could have, <laughs> or maybe it was the can of tomatoes being chucked at your head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it must have dislodged something. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> uh, so. So what? Uh, we've been teasing a story. <laughs> Are we going to go into this now? All right. Um, <laughs> we have. So I slept with a married woman. Yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> did you break any of the rules? Because I, I, I told there, you there are rules. Is there rules? There are rules, man. There are fucking rules. This isn't nom. <laughs> this isn't nom. There are rules. Let's break down the rules real quick before we go into this. All right. I'm going to go by, and I've only done this once, but through it all, like I built my own set of rules. Oh, I'm starting to remember now. Yeah. <laughs> Rule number one, <laughs> never <laughs> initiate. Did you follow that rule? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, never initiate. That's the first rule. Because then, if anything happens, remember, you're you're just a stove. <laughs> yeah. You're just the fucking stove, dude. Rule number two, you cannot know the husband. Nah, broken rule. Oh, man. See, yeah. no, that's it. You know, it's I didn't feel shitty about that. We'll and, go into that in a little bit, but and then there are other rules, and I don't remember them all. But I sort of <laughs> built them as I went along, yeah. you know. And uh, you know, because it's funny, because while I was going through the little 
relationship, I guess, with the person that I was. Like, everybody was like, oh, my God. Like, they were saying, you know, people were talking shit, which I don't blame them. I mean, it's How kind of, dare you? Yeah, it's like, it's kind of scummy and fucked up. And mine wasn't just a one-night stand. Like, mine was an ongoing thing. Yeah. And it's funny because in retrospect, in a, fr- a mutual friend of ours who had heard your story said, oh, man, like, I'm so glad that you had your thing with who you had it with and not like this shit because this shit was done so wrong <laughs> so so um thug life on me <laughs> oh man i wish we had that sound bite we do but i don't know yeah, yeah. It's, it's too late now um i had a close friend right and um i didn't i, I mean i knew the husband but i wasn't I didn't ever consider myself close friends with this guy yeah you know what i mean like i hung out with them like maybe a handful of times and um her and I had talked about, which was really weird. Like in retrospect, it sounds so weird, but it kept getting brought up, like how we weren't going to have sex, right? Yeah. And I considered her like a, a pretty close friend. That always means something. What? When they say that, like, that's a manipulation tactic. I didn't see it like that at the time. I mean, I started thinking it was kind of weird when it kept coming up. Yeah. But I figured, like, you know, the first couple times, it's just letting us know, like, getting like a rapport with somebody, like, okay, so we both mutually understand that this isn't going to happen that yeah. it's bad for the friendship and um now nah, she was she was bucketizing you dude oh, God. yeah i know she I, was. I see it now yeah but um i i know that game full well and the thing about it is i had just talked to her about how remember i was talking to me a while back about how i had i had had sex with somebody like a friend and it, it just it didn't feel too well yeah and um i had a really hard time with it i was like depressed for two days like i just i realized that i no longer wanted to have like meaningless sex yeah right which with friends is weird because usually i get that with like randos yeah. and stuff but if it's like somebody you actually know and are close with it seems like it, it works out a lot better emotionally um it can for, it really depends with me like if because this person that i had had sex with was a she was kind of a close friend but it was just the fact that it there wasn't like any passion behind it. Mm. Like it was just really like, I'm just here to like get off. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that it didn't feel good. Mm. So I had talked to this friend about this, you know, in, in depth. Like because I was like, I ignored her for like two days, and she thought it was like, you know, how chicks get. Like it was me. Like you're <laughs> ignoring me because I fucked up. So I explained it to her, right? And then like less than a week later, you know, she came over and we're watching a movie or whatever. And uh, it was kind of a we watched Interstellar, which is like three, like almost like three and a half hour long movie. A lot of weird shit happens to you when you watch that movie. I think. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like that movie. That's cool. So we're watching this movie or whatever, and um, she ends up leaving right after the movie, and uh, it's kind of late. And like, I, you know me with this movie. Like, I went and saw this movie like what like seven or eight times in, in the theater. theater yeah. yeah, and you've seen it like like three times that <laughs> since then. Yeah. <laughs> like, I really like watching it. I like, like, introducing other people to it. Like, I I have a, this deep connection with this movie. So, like, she came over and watched it, and, like, it was just, like, dry for her. She was like, yeah, that was kind of cool. And I was like, dude, like, this shit was badass, dude. Like, you can't, don't front. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so she leaves, right? And I'm like, I'm like, oh, dude, like. There are movie like, people, and then there are film people. <clears throat> oh, There's God, a difference. Yeah, dude, that's, uh, we're not going to get into that right now. <laughs> so I go to bed, right? And then um, I had a, a friend over, and um, she ended up, so she was she was with us watching the movie. She ended up going to sleep early, and I wake up in the middle of the night to her, like, getting up to leave, because apparently I was, like, snoring too loud. Mm-hmm. And, like, we started getting into this argument. I'm, like, I'm like half asleep, like, arguing for zero reason. Like, this person had, like, every right to, like, leave because I was snoring too loud, right? <laughs> so now I'm, like, up, right? And I was, like, oh, fuck, dude. Like, so I check my phone. And I get this phone from this chick saying, like, oh, I see how it is. Like, you uh, you keep me busy while, like, all this other shit's happening behind my back. And I'm like, what the hell? Dude? This chick's, like, freaking out. And she's telling me how she, like, you know, she didn't drink. Yeah. So she's telling me how she, like, decided to drink. And I'm like, what the hell, dude? Like, I'm, <laughs> I just woke up. Like, I don't know what's <laughs> going on here. So I call her, and she's she sounds like she's driving. She sounds kind of drunk. And um, this whole time, this chick had been having an affair with some other guy, right? Yeah. And um, which is fine. Like, I don't judge people based on that. Like, do what you want. Yeah. But I had always told her, like, you know, expect, like, go into this expecting the worst. And if you can accept what may come with that, then do your then, thing. Yeah, do, exactly. And that's how I live my life. You know what I mean? Like, I, I look at the, situ- the situation in front of me and I decide, is 
the worst possible outcome worth this for me. Yeah, And exactly. I'll either go through with it or I won't, you know, because... I don't. I can't do the whole right and wrong thing. I get too fucking convoluted in my head. Yeah, because right and wrong is just so subjective that you can't. Yeah. There's no such thing really. I mean, obviously, don't kill people. You know, that's not good. Usually. Or do you know, or whatever. do whatever. <laughs> but like when it comes to morals, there are no absolutes. <laughs> Sorry, that's Help. a really like ambiguous <laughs> <laughs> reference. But um, <laughs> so uh, you know, I had been kind of warning her about this, like you know, like expect the bottom to fall out here any moment now. You know, like. You're probably going to end up drinking again, like, and, um, only me and, like, really, like, I think one other person, like, really knew about it, you know? Yeah. So whenever she, like, got ready to, like, drink, like, you know what I mean? Like, in Mm -hmm. quotes, like, over the situation, like, she'd come over and, like, talk and, like, I'd talk her off the ledge. I took numerous bottles of alcohol out of her purse (laughs) so she wouldn't drink over this. Jose Cuervo. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, a couple nights before that, like, I'd pulled a bottle of Jose Cuervo out of her, out of her purse and... So she comes over, and uh, I guess what had happened is this person that she had been having an affair with, she thought that he was sleeping with somebody else, which... He's single. Yeah, <laughs> and she's married. So she, <laughs> she like, started drinking and, like, flipped her lid. Like, I... You know what I mean? Like, girls, in general, can be pretty psychotic, right? Yeah. But um, this chick comes over. Um, You know, she, she starts, like, just talking all this smack. I call her on the phone. Like I said, she sounds she, like she's driving. She's... Sounds like she's a little bit drunk, and she just starts arguing with me, and I'm like, dude, like, I, I can't do this right now. Like, I gotta go to bed. So yeah. I hang up. Homegirl leaves, which was staying the night over, and, like, decided to leave because I was snoring. And um, this chick's like, can I come over or whatever? And I, I think I said, I don't remember exactly, but I was like, sure, like, come over. And uh, she shows up, and she's just a fucking wreck, dude. Like, total mess. Psychotic. She's in love with this dude she's having an affair with. She's talking about how she wants to like marry him and like leave her husband and oh, I'm like geez. homegirl like check it out <laughs> you're having an affair with this guy like first of all like there's gonna be trust issues going in like yes you're cheating instantly on yeah like instantly you're gonna have trust issues right he's young you're old as fuck <laughs> he probably like <laughs> is just having fun like he, like he assumed you were and um she starts talking to me about how like all her guy friends just want to fuck her and like Again, we had had this conversation about my my sexual problems, like my uh, my sex addiction, mm-hmm. and how, how we had agreed like not to have sex with each other, and I, I really didn't think she was attracted to me, so I didn't think it was an issue. So she's sitting here in my living room, and she's starting to get real crazy, right? And she said, "Oh, like all my guy friends just want to fuck me. Like, why don't you just fuck me right here?" And she starts <laughs> trying to pull her clothes off, right? Nice. And <laughs> no, dude, I was <laughs> I was petrified. My kids like so. Oh, yeah, your kids were there. My kids were there. I mean, they were in bed. Yeah. But they're in the other room, right? So I'm like, I like shut, like, I I put my hand, like, over my face. I'm like, please stop. Like, don't do that. (laughs) Right. And she gets her top off and I get her to stop, right? And she's just this total drunk mess. And uh, she's like, can I spit my gum out? And I'm like, yeah. So she goes into the kitchen, which I have, like, curtains that block my kitchen. And she's, I thought it was weird that she was in there for longer than 35 seconds. Yeah. (laughs) And I go in there, and she's just pugging this vodka that she had left, or no, this uh, Jose Cuervo that she had left like two days prior. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. Like, Shit's about to get way this worse. This is really bad, yeah. <laughs> so she comes back in the living room, and she's like, she's like, why don't you just do it? Just fuck me and get it over with. And I'm like, dude, I don't, like, we talked about this. I don't want to fuck you. Like, I really don't. So she just, like, literally within, like, two to three seconds, all her clothes comes off. <laughs> like, she, like, reaches back, unclips her bra, and, like, after that, like, it was just, like, Clothes over the top, like pants down, just naked. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, please stop. Please. You're like, that is amazing, but don't do that again. <laughs> yeah, I was like, please, please, please stop. I'm like freaking out, right? I'm like uh, texting my friend that was just there. I'm like, dude, like I need help. Like this is, I'm, I'm freaking out. So my, what I knew to do immediately was I have that, um, every time we record here, every time anything happens in my life, mm-hmm. I have this audio recorder on my phone, right? Yeah. And I can record at high quality up to like, 28 hours or something like that. Wow. So I turned it on. I'm like, dude, like, whatever happens, I need to turn this on because this might save me at some point. Yeah. Right? Even though I'm single, I don't, like, owe any explanation to anybody, but you know what I mean? Like, Well, I mean, you don't want to get shot. Yeah, or, like, somebody starts screaming rape. <laughs> you know <what laughs> or I mean? that, yeah, that I works. I have, like, audio evidence. So I turn my audio recorder on, and she's, like, laying on one of my couches just naked, like, spreading her legs, just doing shit that 
is tempting to me. But at this point, like, even though I had been drinking, I had some sense in me. And I was like, dude, like, you just, you need to leave. Yeah. Um, so I start grabbing your clothes and trying to dress her, which is, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever tried to dress a drunk person. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fucking hard, dude. Bottom line is, like, after, I'd say <laughs> an hour and 45 minutes to two hours and, like, 15 minutes of just nonsense somebody waving their vagina in your face eventually like the man with the sex addiction is gonna break yeah well i mean <laughs> fuck, dude that's like two and a half hours that's yeah. a ridiculous amount of time and, yeah and once that it like a, a day and a half later after like i was able to like <laughs> kind of regain consciousness and put myself back together i was almost proud of myself yeah because right? we had talked about that on the phone and i was like dude i don't know how the hell you did that because i had somebody do the same thing to me and it was 45 minutes we weren't in the same room and i was almost like in my car driving to their house yeah because like pussy just doesn't fall in your lap like that you know N- what i mean no decent looking pussy never falls into my lap yes. just like that ever yeah, ever so the challenge was there like it's like a <laughs> sick fucking joke is what it is <laughs> yeah so you know i i just kept, and then you know she started talking about jose canseco which i talked to you about this <laughs> like she just starts like randomly like she's so first of all she's telling me about how she's in love with this guy and i'm trying to tell her like it's never gonna ha- like happen ever like i don't oh, care how man. in love with them you are talking about divorcing her husband i say fine do it like you're fucking up already you may as well and then she brings up jose canseco and i'm like i stop and i'm like are you talking about the baseball player you like, got ten- <laughs> yes. Jose Canseco, the baseball player, has. What does this have to do with anything that we're fucking talking about? You <laughs> psycho batshit whore. <laughs> oh, yeah. And oh. I was like, I did not understand. We need to make a note of that. Psycho batshit whore <laughs> is the name of this episode. So, yes, eventually I ended up fucking her, right? For all of like 30 seconds, and then I threw up. <laughs> because. At the end of the day, she was my close friend that I didn't want to ruin this friendship with. Yeah. And I knew in that moment, as soon as I entered her. <laughs> <laughs> nice hand gestures. That the, the real friendship was over. Yeah. And it would never be the same again. And that's what was hurting me inside. Yeah. And it, I mean, it still hurts today because it was somebody that I really, truly considered a true friend. Yeah. And that's where this thing gets deep and it gets emotional. And we're not going to go there today because it's still on the trigger. And we're really about... I don't know what we're about anymore. I don't even know. People are like, people are like, what's your, I think it's a good time for this. I think it is. I don't know what we're about. People ask me like, what's your podcast about? And I'm like, it's about everything. I don't don't know. I think it's just something for us to fucking sit and like, it became like we had a mission and we had like, we had a purpose at one point, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, and then it just kind of like became a way for us to like, kind of catch up with each other on a weekly basis yeah you know and uh you know because of uh sort of my circumstance you know because i'm i'm kind of in that phase of a relationship where like hanging out with that person is like one of the only things you want to do you know so i haven't really been around much so this whole drama that's been going on with you and this lady where before i would have been like kind of a part of that in a way like I, i don't think i would have fucked her but uh yeah unless you were there I don't know, man, because I, like, I saw shit coming from a mile. Like, I didn't know all this would happen, but I had a feeling, like, something dramatic was going to happen with this person. Yeah. Like, I did, too. I just didn't see myself as a part of it. Yeah. I saw this affair blowing up. And the thing was, like, the next day, right, she, uh, I told her, like, dude, like, there's people that I need to tell about this. Yeah. For my own sanity. You yeah, know exactly. What I mean? Like, I, I, there's just certain parts of my life that I can't keep secret. And there's people that I care about that need to know about this because I need to feel like a half decent human being. Yeah. Right. So, um, so she understood that. And I kind of assumed that she was going to come clean with her husband at some point about things. Yeah. But I didn't expect to get a phone call at nine o'clock at work the next day. Wasn't the net, it was the next day too. Yeah. Huh? So you're still like recovering from this, yeah. this bullshit. Well, she stayed the night over. The audio recorder didn't turn off until like probably seven thirty the next morning when she left. Wow. Cause, and then the next morning, she still tries to, like, cuddle with me. Like, on the ca- I'm on the couch, and she comes out of the room where she was sleeping, and she tries to cuddle. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> are you serious right now? Like, <laughs> do you realize what we did? <laughs> do you realize the people that we may have hurt here? And are going to cut off my Johnson. <laughs> yeah. So I get a phone call from the husband, and then I, I, I was like, dude, like, you need to, like, talk to your wife. I was trying to give her an opportunity. I don't think you said those words. 
Yeah, you, dude. Yeah. You, you said you need to talk to your wife. Yeah, I, I didn't. Thought... I didn't give him an answer. I was like, dude, like you need to get a hold of your wife. Get a hold of whoever she's close to. Get her sober so you guys can talk and then talk to me like adults. And I was trying to give her a chance to like be honest about the full situation because when he called me, it didn't. It sounded like he only told. She only told him about me. Yeah. Right? Well, that's how it always goes. She's the victim. Well, the truth was she didn't say anything about the affair. So I ended up talking <laughs> to her on the phone later. And um, I was like, hey, like, so what happened? She's like, she's like, oh, I told him all about it. And I'm like, all right, like, you told him about the affair too, right? Yeah. And she's like, no, well, he's just like, so basi- I can't say, like, exactly what she said. But basically what the best way to, like, describe it was her saying, like, well, he just has so much to lose that I couldn't tell my husband about him because he's got a lot to lose. You like, know bitch, I, mean? I got kids. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, wait. So you're basically like using me as some kind of like scapegoat to like ruin your marriage. And like, you're not going to complain about like this affair that you've been having for like close <laughs> to three to four months now. <laughs> and has I just it been that up, long? Like, wow. It's been a while, dude. Yeah. Wow. So Time like, flies when you're having fun, I guess. Yeah, so I just, I was like, dude, I couldn't, if I would have stayed on the phone with her, like, and she was, like, either in the hospital or in a mental hospital or something, because she tried to pull, like, the suicide card to, yeah. like, get sympathy so that she wouldn't be, like, in so much trouble, Yeah. You know? But uh, I wasn't about to have that, so I just hung up, because I didn't want to, like, push her over the edge, you know what I mean? I'll let her do that on her own. And at some point, she was, like, she she called me asking for help, because we had been arguing about this whole thing afterward, and she was like, think about my son, and I was like... Don't you dare. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you want me to, like, play your card so I can yeah. think about your son so you don't kill yourself? I was like, fuck you, dude. That's on you. Fuck you and your son. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Damn it, dude. Wow. So, uh, yeah, this whole thing is kind of still unraveling. Um, is it really? I thought it was pretty much done by now. Um, Pretty sure she's getting a divorce. Yeah, right. I heard I heard that. <laughs> yeah. That's what I heard. I, I kind of had, like, a little a little tiff with her on Facebook. Yeah, I saw that. But uh, she ended up taking it down because I was clearly yeah. winning. <laughs> yeah, she ended up trying to like she was. She afterwards she was like texting me all this stuff about how like so and so is gonna find out about this and about that. I'm like, dude, like I don't live my life isn't a huge secret. Yeah, you know what I mean. Tell anybody you want about me. Like I try to live my life out in the open, and that's why the next morning, as soon as I woke up, like I started telling the people that I cared about like what had happened. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't like living my life like that today, like with these big secrets and like, you know what I mean, living life behind closed doors. Is I feel like if the people that I care about know about what's going on, going on in my life, then I really have nothing to worry about. Yeah, and when it comes out, it's not like because it, wh- whoever knows this happened that that you didn't directly tell. I don't know what her story sounds like, but you probably come out looking like a scumbag. Oh, I apparently. Um, I got her drunk. Well, she was drunk before she got to my house. Yeah. Apparently, I got her drunk and seduced her. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> is, that's, you know. It's fine that people think that, you know, like. Yeah. I, I really I mean, don't. The people who are going to believe that aren't a big enough part of my life for me to even care about that. that that's a good point. That's a You know, and point. when it comes down to it, I have the audio evidence of what happened that night. I have, I don't delete my text messages like she does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which was fishy at first because she was like, oh, I just delete my text message for space. You know what I mean? No, she doesn't do it for space. She does it. Well, I mean. I can see why she would do it with the other guy, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, she she had shenanigans planned with, you know, with a couple people, I think. I don't know. I just think yeah. that she, I don't know what's going on between the two of them, and that's none of my business, but there's definitely, like, she had, I, I smelled something fishy, like, right when I, like, met her, kind of. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't her, her pussy either. <laughs> well, it might have been. I don't know. What, was it? <laughs> it wasn't stinky. Yeah. So, I mean, it it smelled, yeah, something smelled fishy to me. And so, at the end of the day, like, I came clean. So, the, the husband, I talked to the husband briefly. And Did, uh, Are you guys cool now or not really? I haven't ta- I haven't even seen him. Yeah. And I don't know what to expect when I see him. I don't know if this guy's going to take flight on me or if he's just going to, like, bring me aside and, like, talk to me and tell me how disappointed he is. Again, I didn't, I don't feel bad at all about, like, the fact that she had a husband. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Like, the only thing that I really felt shitty about on the inside is that I betrayed my friendship, like, be- my friendship with this person, and that that friendship is gone. That's it. Yeah. The fact that she had a husband, like, dude, her marriage was gone, like, like in four months before I got to her. You yeah. Know? So, um, that's all I really feel bad about. And if he approaches me, then uh, we'll see what happens, you know? Yeah. Things happen. <laughs> that's how it goes, dude. I'm not going to let him, like, 
hit me or anything like that. Yeah, yeah no. But um, and you know, and I, I've seen him a couple times. And I he doesn't like he seems heartbroken and sad. Yeah, but I think he might have just like gotten past anger and he's just like over shit. Yeah, since when I've seen him, and uh, I mean, it sucks. It does suck that that has to happen. But uh, you know, say la vie. I it guess. happened to me. So I know what he feels like. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I just want to tell him, like, dude, like, grab him by the shoulder and be like, it's for the best, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in your shoes. <laughs> and uh, uh, I would been, highly I've recommend been in your you don't other, do that. I've been in your worn out, nasty shoe, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> your worn out, nasty fucking crock. <laughs> No. Did I take that a step too far? <laughs> oh man. Croc or Ugg? Crocs, dude. That's even grosser. Oh, Crocs. God, Crocs. Just, I mean they're machine machine washable, but whoever does. I, I can't be friends with somebody who wears Crocs. Uh, I, just I was friends do. with somebody who wore Crocs. It's like a wi- it's like a wiffle ball as a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's kind of like the basis of it. Like it's you know <laughs> shit happened. Uh, it was pretty bad. Uh, I think the throw up was the worst part of it. <laughs> uh, how about the crying? Oh my god, dude! Uh, <laughs> yeah. So she's uh, it's I I couldn't tell if it was a freight cry or if it was a drunk cry, <laughs> but she would start crying and she was like, <laughs> one of those, <laughs> right? So oh, I, at some point, like there was like <laughs> there was moments where I got her to calm down long enough to like knock her shit off, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, at one point she's like I'm gonna go smoke a cigarette So she goes outside And I stayed inside And it's I'm silence thinking, for I'm tired minute, Yeah right? she's out there smoking And then I hear the oh! And I'm I live in an apartment complex dude Like this is like 2.30 in the morning Yeah Like my neighbors don't wanna hear that shit Yeah So like I'd hear her and I'd be like Shut up <laughs> <laughs> And she would like She would stop And it was just like It was weird Cause she was crying And then she'd be like Okay <laughs> And I was like Dude, this bitch is like nutty right now. Oh, I ended fuck. up sleeping with a loaded gun under my pillow because I didn't know what this bitch was gonna do. Yeah, like at this point, like she was just like fucking bonkers. I think yeah. the way I described her was like a, what was it? So, oh no, this was when she was like naked, like running around my house, just like fucking flapping her shit around, <laughs> like a tuna sandwich. I called her a. I said, "You don't know what it's like to have a racially ambiguous." <sighs> Chick doing the tuna across your living room, <laughs> flopping around. That's fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> oh man, I I'm just I'm glad that I was a spectator. I just wish I kind of wish I was a couple more rows up, you know. <laughs> like I wish I was like almost in the soak zone, yeah, like Sea World style, you know. Yeah, but. Where you see the person right in front of you, get their camera splash, and you're dry. Yeah, yeah. like right there. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I was right there, but uh, maybe for the next one. I kind of miss chaos, man. I sort of miss like drama and chaos a little bit. I saw this crazy post today of this chick like talking shit about her boyfriend and how like she tagged like the the side hoe in her post. Yeah, talking about how like he's off like doing heroin with this chick. Like, yeah, I yeah. dude, yeah. There's another, I, I don't know if it's the same person, um, but there's this one girl who's just always putting her dirty laundry up on uh, up on Facebook. And, uh, like Is it a chick I know? It, it might be. I don't yeah. know. Um, she was saying uh, like a year or so ago, she said that um, like, fuck my boyfriend. Like he thinks he's he can just go and just show pictures of himself to anybody, yada, yada. And then she like posts pictures. That he was sending to chicks up on her, up on her thing, up on her newsfeed. Like nudies? No, it was like it was basically. She said, and there's more of them, but I can't share them because it's Facebook. But it was like pictures of him with his shirt off and this and that, and uh, yeah, and just every this you just watch the story unfold, and then she gets back with him again, <laughs> and then like a month. That's the best part. Yeah, and then like a month later, she's like, "Oh, I'm so in love," and people are like. He's a, a, like <laughs> yeah. a month ago, you were calling him a scum. Like, and like oh, don't judge me. <laughs> pe- people change and this and that. And then like another time, she was bitching and complaining because like she does haircuts and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I guess somebody like was supposed to pay her money and like never did. And 
Yeah. And so she's like tagging the person's name. <laughs> this person <laughs> owes me money for a haircut that I get. I'm like, fuck, man, like stop. Yeah. Fucking. And I just, I told this girl's ex like just the other day, I was like, dude, honestly, she has no business being on YouTube. Like whatsoever. Facebook? Like she, or yeah. Did I say YouTube? I did. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook. She has no business being on Facebook at all. Yeah. She just has no. Is this, are we talking about the same person? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's entertainment for the crowd, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm like, I tune in. I'm actually in the middle of watching this other, a divorce unfold where like nudies are being posted on Facebook. Really? Yeah. Are you saving them? No, no, no. My what? boss is. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I have him as, a, as like, an archive. It's like the personal fappening, dude. Yeah. It's this guy that we're, we're in business with at my work. We sell steel to him and his business crumbled. He got a divorce and uh, he like got a girlfriend and they're like constantly posting pictures of like the the husband and wife with their like new partners yeah and um it's just rapidly unfolding to the point where like she so he owns a steel business and she sent a picture of herself to his driver one of his truck drivers Mm -hmm. with like a bottle of tequila like upper snatch so he got pissed off and posted on her wall where like her like family and friends and everything can see a picture of himself eating his girlfriend out Wow. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's it's pretty amazing. <laughs> I'm pretty into it. <laughs> it's like a new TV show. Yeah, it's like, like the third season of Game of Thrones. Dude. See, pretty, I need like, to f- see. I need to get friends like this because of my, like, I just had ne- Netflix canceled. Oh, really? Because my my card got declined, and so I'm like Netflixless. Oh, so man. I need to like find some new shit. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Fuck, man. Dude, you gotta get on that Game of Thrones, man. Yeah, I keep hearing that. I don't know. Uh. Just try it out, I guess. It's dramatic and brutal. It's tragic. <laughs> <laughs> is it better than uh? I mean, I'm sorry. I, I tried to give it a shot, but Boardwalk Empire was just not my my. Oh, that show was garbage. I'm so glad you tuned out of that. Really? Yeah, uh, I tried to finish. It. I couldn't even finish it. Really? Yeah. It was just too boring to me. I just couldn't. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you know how I feel about series too. Like, I don't judge a series until it's over because, like, you can be great, but if you can't come full circle and end a show properly, you're garbage. Yeah, that's true. But you could be garbage the whole way, but the last season could be okay. But it's like, I don't know. For it, To me, it wasn't garbage. Like, I saw that it was, like, good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, from what I saw, it just, it was just too much dramatic, like, buildup to yeah. things. It's like, fuck, okay, here we are again. No, this is a, this is a lot different. Yeah. This is by far, it will, it's going to, it's a record-breaking show. Yeah. It's a, Do you it's like it better than The Wire? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. better than The Wire, huh? Because you swore by The Wire. Up until I still today. do. That's still one of my favorites. But uh, I think again, I have to wait until it completes. Yeah. But um, I think it'll surpass that. When a lot of people I know that are fans of uh, of Game of Thrones have read all the books. I haven't read any of the books. And they and usually people who really love books they can't stand the shows or the movies yeah. of anything. And uh, and even the book people are like, "Fuck yeah!" Like they did a really good job. Yeah, it's yeah. intense. Um, <laughs> it, this is kind of it can get weird. What do you feel about incest? Um, in general, like, what do you mean? How, what do I feel about it? Like, do I think it's wrong? <clears throat> I think if you yeah, have, or like, okay. there's like simulated incest and in porn, where like I can, I personally can get off to that. Like, if it's simulated, yeah, or whatever, or even if I think it's not. I'm, I think if two consenting adults want to have sex and they're safe about it, because uh, obviously you don't want a bunch of little tards running, little potatoes running around. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? How but do you like, feel about being tricked into incest? Oh, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> like, this like so and so knows. So this is it's a Game of Thrones reference. I was watching, and this isn't really too big of a spoiler, but um, I was watching it again because the new season's gonna start in a couple of months. So I went back and I watched it, and there's this character who uh, he got taken away when he was like a young kid, and he's like a ward for some this other like castle community, and he goes back home as a favor to his keeper, and um, he goes back to his like his island or whatever, and he's cruising around with this chick. And, like, from the shipyard, like, from the docks up to the castle, like, this chick gives him a ride, right? And he's, like, flirting with her, and, like, he's, like, fingering her on the way there. And, like, he gets to the castle or whatever, and he sees his dad. And, like, you know, yada, yada, yada. They do the whole, uh, yada, yada, yada. What, like, what do we yada, feel about no, that? No, yada's fine. I keep going. Keep going. <laughs> uh, you know, they reunite, <laughs> and um, he's talking to him about, like, you know, their plans for war or whatever. And then, like, the chick that gave him a ride walks into the room, right? 
And he's telling her, like, what did I tell you? I told you to wait by the door. And finds out it's his sister. Oh, yeah. And, like, she has a smile on him, like, uh, like, I got you. Like, uh, I tricked you into fingering me. Yeah, to me, that's, like, coercion. I think that's <laughs> fucked up. But, like, <laughs> but like, two consenting people fucking, regardless yeah. of their family. I don't know. I'm for it. Like, have fun. Fuck your sister. Yeah. Who gives a shit? But if, if somebody, like, if a chick tricks but, her, like, yeah. brother into fingering her. Yeah, because he may not be okay with it. You know what I mean? And that's fucked up. But maybe it was for all the times, like, he put his dick in her mouth and took a scroll or, what, or like, a hieroglyph. What did they have back then? Uh, yeah, I don't know. A fucking <laughs> Took a hieroglyphic. <laughs> took a hieroglyphic. <laughs> they didn't have cameras, so. <laughs> no, t- took a, hieroglyphic is like a character. It's like a letter. It's like, well, he a, took, a, a, he a, took a painting. He took a painting. He took, he took a quick self-portrait. She's like, that, that's for all those times that you put your dick in my mouth and took a painting. <laughs> wow. That's a long time having your dick <laughs> in someone's yeah. mouth. Oh, fuck. Uh, oh, okay. Like Michelangelo come in the room and like draw a... Make a painting real quick. Really. <laughs> so on the yada 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 thing, yada that doesn't bother me. None none of them really bother me. Not even the da 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 da. I no that <laughs> this is funny. So, um, I've two things. One, I've caught myself this week saying blah 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 blah, like yeah. the blah blah one, like all the time. I'll I'll do it and I'll be like fuck, like I do that a lot as a filler, you know. But uh, I've never da 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 da. Has never bugged me. It still doesn't. Bug it doesn't me. bug you. It still doesn't bug me. Yeah. But I'm becoming aware of it. Uh, yeah. And uh, this morning, a couple of days ago, I was talking to Lauren, and she was telling me a story. And she goes, <laughs> "Yeah." And she was saying da 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 da. And I was like looking around <laughs> to see if you were there, right? And then this morning, we we're sitting around having some coffee, dude. And she's talking about having a conversation last night, and she goes, "Yeah." And so and so said da 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 da. And I just like. I had to turn around because I was like, sm- <laughs> I was fucking smirking because like oh, it doesn't shit. bug me. But I was like, and my next thought was, oh, no, can we like not hang out with Mike? Like, is this <laughs> is this going to be a thing? Uh, uh, there was this chick that I thought was really cute. And um, it would have been almost cool to put my penis inside her. <laughs> and then that came out of her mouth. Really? And you yeah. just didn't? So it's like well, I didn't ever really, like I didn't ever really have the opportunity to, and I don't think it would have arose. But I just checked out as soon as she said that. Like I don't know. So for the record, ladies, if you ever want Mike to not hit on you or try to fuck you, say da 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 da, and then dye your eyebrows a separate oh, color from your hair, yeah, or your hair a separate color, and then just keep your eyebrows like the darker, darker shade. Shameful. <laughs> Shameful. Oh, anything else happening? Um, not really, man. I, uh, what happened? I had a few things, like, small things. I don't even know, man. They're they're gone probably by this point. Um, do you know a lot of, uh, like, like strong, like, hardcore Republicans? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do they bother you at all? Yeah, anybody, any extremist on either side is yeah, yeah, yeah. really bothersome to me, yeah. So, um... <laughs> I bought like I love my bosses, you know, but they're like they're super conservative Republicans. Like they they think Obama is the devil. <laughs> you know what I mean? And Thanks, I, Obama. I, yeah. <laughs> I could really like when it comes to that, like I just I tune out because if you're gonna be so extreme on either end, like I just have nothing to like really converse with you about. Yeah, exactly. You know, and um as you guys know, I'm in the recycling business, and we uh, we deal with, like, scrap metals and, like, the state cans and plastics and stuff. Well, steel has taken a complete dive, right? In the market? In the market. Yeah. It's worth nothing at this point, for us anyway. So we yeah. take it, and um, not only that, but there's certain metals, like... Is it almost like an expense to take it? It's, like, that bad? Um, We almost break even, so we have to, like, pay to ship our stuff out. And by the time we get our three cents per pound, like it kind of just evens out. Yeah. So we just take it as like a like a courtesy. Yeah. Um. But they they've gotten so specific about things like if we take like anything that's steel, like say somebody brings in a steel trailer, it can't have like the tires on it, like the rubber, mm. you know. So like there's little things too that have been tweaked, and like it's it's getting real specific now on what we can take and what we can like as far as mixed metals. So some lady calls, and I'm in the office, and like some lady calls, and she has this like trailer. And um, my boss, the wife, doesn't really know the specifics on this stuff. And the guy wasn't there. So, like, I'm in there, and she's asking, like, well, what can it be? And I was like, well, I can't take a whole horse trailer. Like, what is it? 
I need to know exactly what it is. Uh. Does it have like a wood floor on it? Like, is there tires on it? So she's like on the phone with this lady and she's trying to describe to her like what we can take and what we can't take. And she's like, just make sure the rubber's not on it. So she kind of explains it and she's like, you know, they've just gotten so picky lately, you know, with like the EPA and climate change. And I just like, <laughs> I know that she felt like my eyes like rolling over in my head. Uh-huh. I'm like, you know, this has zero to do with climate change and the fucking EPA. Like this has to do with like <laughs> specifics with our buyers. Yeah. Like it has nothing to do with Obama. <laughs> like trust me on this. It has zero to do with Obama. Fucking Obama. And like I could hear like the person on the other line. I could hear, like, almost hear them checking out. Like, why are we, why are we talking about this now? Because yeah. she started going into like, she's like, you know, Trump is like the new, like the new big thing. He's gonna make America great again. Oh, <laughs> and I'm man. like, stop! You're running a business here. Oh, dude. Like, run a business. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it's it's hard oh, to man. watch like people like coming and trying like trying to make like a few extra bucks. And then get like wrangled into this like <laughs> circle. That's what you get. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know if you ever like seen like a colony of ants or like a stream. You can like draw a circle with your finger, and it like erases the pheromones. Yeah. And like they get stuck in the circle and they yeah. can't get out. I feel like that's what it's like for these people that come into my work. Like somebody just drew a circle and they're just sitting there. <laughs> Fuck. And most people put up with it. Yeah. Like people will sit there. I'm sorry, America, but you're stupid. <laughs> bunch of retards out there. Why like why can't we just speak our mind and be like, you know what? Like I respect that you're a Republican and all, but like can I just get my money and leave? Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, can I just get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Like we can do that. I know as a society we can pull together and not give a fuck about each other's politics and move on. Yeah. It's hard though. I mean and some people like and I'm guilty of this myself, especially if it's somebody I care about or I'm I'm friends with, and you'll know who I'm talking about. You know, I have this friend who's incredibly left wing. Yeah. And uh, and I think I lean a little bit more right on a lot of things yeah. than I do on others. And uh, and th- this friend of ours will make everything, every fucking thing political. Like, I don't even know how the fuck he does it. It's magical. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen him do this? <laughs> yeah. He's just like, like, you'll be talking about something and he'll be like, yeah, it's almost like that senator in <laughs> Kentucky you yeah. fucking... And I'm like, what the fuck did Rand Paul do? Like, what <laughs> what has he got to do with this? And I happen to like Rand Paul, so go uh, fuck yourself. But uh, yeah, I, I and I just and I don't want to say anything to him because like I don't want because some people like they'll let their friendship be affected. Oh, exactly. By somebody's political stance, yeah, you know, or or the way somebody feels about something because they're especially if it's something that's sheerly political and there's actually no moral value to. They think that it's the person's like moral problem, and therefore they don't want to associate with him. It's like dude, it's, it's fucking politics. Like my boss has that problem with his brother, dude. They're constantly like getting into Facebook battles, and like it, it gets heavy, man. Mm-hmm. And it's his like brother, you know, and yeah. I mean? like just love your brother. It's almost bro. like the Civil War and shit, dude. <laughs> At least yeah. they're not killing each other, I guess, over it. It's heavy, man. Um, we can kind of end with this, unless you want to go into something else. No, was, that's let's. Let's do whatever. I uh so again in in my line of work we have um we deal with the state a lot the state of California because you know we buy and sell plastics and metals through them that they basically own in a way so they're allowed to put these regulations and stuff that make certain offenses finable and they're just stupid laws like we can't take like we buy plastics but we can't take milk milk jugs you know what yeah. I mean and if they find them there it's a finable offense now as of two years ago do you know what the fine is it's like two thousand dollars. For one fucking bottle? Yeah. Holy and the reason, it, it all fucking came from, Obama. and this is in, yeah, in quotes, it came from, like, people committing, like, state fraud, like, two years ago, like, $9 million worth of state fraud, where they were, like, importing illegal plastics and selling them to the state. So that's really, like, where it's coming from, right? But it's all just this ploy to, like, make something findable, because they know what's going to happen, and they know they can pull money from these small businesses, right? Yeah. And I was thinking, like, I personally, I consider myself politically challenged if you will <laughs> okay but despite my racial handicap i'm a pretty smart guy i think <laughs> i think <laughs> for the most part i'd say that I'd, I'd say that's a fair assessment and i'm i'm like sitting here and i'm like dude like we c- our government can change again I'm, I'm politically challenged here so don't you know take what i say with a grain of salt okay <laughs> um they can change as many laws as they want and create fines and create anything that they want to make money. Mm-hmm. And as long 
as we don't take booze from Americans, <laughs> all we're going to do is bicker and complain and just keep drinking. <laughs> like, right? Like it's that's, not... I believe that that is the tipping point for America. Well, I mean, isn't that the, and I, you know, I, I know the Bill of Rights pretty well, the first 10 amendments, yeah. but everything after that, like I know 18 was prohibition and 21 was the repeal of prohibition. <laughs> and I don't know how many of the amendments, I know maybe one other amendment was actually appealed, re- repealed, but I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's like the only one where they like, this is an amendment to the Constitution, no alcohol. And it was so bad that they're like, <laughs> never mind, like we're amending our, our last amendment because this is terrible. Pedal, pedal. <laughs> but yeah, dude, that I mean, was we, such we a can, dismal failure. We can, <laughs> we're just going to keep bending over. You yeah. know, all of us, right, left, it doesn't matter, like, where you stand. Yeah, center. It's, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, until you take the booze away from the American people, like, we'll just t- keep taking it. And I think they know that. As they can even take drugs away, and we're like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's Don't fun. take our Coors Light. <laughs> America. And really, that's what makes America so goddamn star-spangled beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, fucking A, that was... Uh, give them booze, and they'll be fine. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Oh, man. Thank you for joining us on this live episode of Toe on the Trigger podcast. Oh, fuck. This episode will be out next Saturday, in case you missed it. If you missed it, you wouldn't be hearing me say this, though. Uh, make sure you go to iTunes, Stitcher, anywhere that you subscribe to podcasts. If you do, hit the subscribe button. Take a stop by the website, check out in, uh, the two blog posts that we've had up for almost a year now, written by yours truly, and uh, check out any of the other episodes. And uh, Mike's on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone listening on the Wicked Radio Network, thank you for that. You can check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash toe on the trigger, and at toe on the trigger on Twitter and Instagram. I'd like to thank everybody with the hashtag Potter and Family handle that follows that. They're a group of podcasters that uh, like to stick together and, uh, you know, help each other out. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, oh, shit. Uh, Make sure you guys leave some feedback. We do have an email address. Please don't spam us with uh, fax requests and stuff. But it is takeashot at toeandthetrigger.com. You can also give us a call at... 863-546-8688. Till next week, keep your toe off that trigger. <laughs>